Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm actually really excited to sit down and catch up with you guys and play with some new makeup. I have been doing a ton of short form content here on YouTube as well as TikTok and I wanted to talk a little bit about that today. I feel like I haven't caught up with you guys and I miss you. So I wanna just kind of talk about life but also try some new products. I know that I'm late but the new Natasha Denona My Dream Collection, I purchased the entire collection. I was wearing this palette in my last video and I had I could not believe how many requests to do a tutorial on the look that I was wearing so I'm gonna do that and use all of the other products which I haven't tried anything else other than the eyeshadow palette so I'm gonna be doing a tutorial on that look and then using all of the other products from the collection I've not tried anything but the eyeshadow palette I also want to continue to test out the house labs foundation but I want to use this with my powders because I know when I did my first impression I used the house labs powder and I thought maybe that threw it off. I did also pick up the Milk Makeup Concealer when I went in store to get the House Labs foundation and then I did get this in PR, the Huda Beauty. This is the new blurring primer with no silicone. So I thought we would test that out and then the one size mascara mini that I purchased and for bronzer I think I'm going to continue to use the Hourglass Tiger palette. Just sort of continue to test products and see what I think but overall we're really going to focus in on the Natasha Denona, the Milk and the Huda Beauty. So I will link everything that I use today down below in my description box. If you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. If you enjoy first impression videos or just trying a bunch of new products on camera, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out and let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so I've got you zoomed in and we're gonna be using the new Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. So this is a midi size palette. I was gonna do a dedicated review to these products. I had the worst luck with shipping last week. I know a lot of people had issues. I purchased this collection pre-order on her website and then it didn't even ship until I think the 8th. So like almost a week later, I paid overnight shipping. It still took a couple days to get to me. And then I was trying to get the Hourglass palettes. Again, bought them early on launch, paid overnight shipping. Days went by, it didn't come. So I ordered another set thinking like, okay, maybe that was like a pre-order and then they both showed up at the same time so I went ahead and did my hourglass video so this just honestly got pushed to the back burner unfortunately but I do want to do the look that I was wearing in my hourglass video because I was shocked how many of you guys wanted to see a tutorial it was pretty you know easy just a halo eye and I wanted to focus or I did focus in that look on not the purples because I know this palette is very purple heavy and a lot of the looks I was seeing was with this gorgeous duochrome I do have to say like woo, this is a beautiful shade like everybody I've seen wearing it looked gorgeous but in the look that I was wearing I actually didn't dip into any of the warm tones or the purple tones so we're just going to recreate that today or I'm going to do my best I'm one of those people and I was talking to Cheryl about this the other day I cannot plan anything, like just content, what look I'm gonna do, my mood. I'm just very impulsive and I just sit down and whatever comes to mind happens. So it's even hard for me to like recreate a look because I'm like, what did I do? I don't know. I just sat down and played and that's what I came up with. But I'm gonna do my best. So I think I started out with the shade Nurture right here and I'm gonna use this on the inner and outer corner to sort of build a halo. So I feel like I haven't talked to you guys in a while. I think when I don't film for a week, I definitely feel it. Just because I love like chatting with you guys and when you guys comment, I really do. I, I mean, I am active in my comment section. It's something that's really important to me to just respond and connect. I love recognizing, you know, you guys commenting and talking about new releases and all that stuff. So I think I'm just missing that because with, you know, short form content, it's just not as connected and I know that a lot of you are probably sick of the shorts and I totally get it. I think it's just one of those things that creators are being pushed to do short form content or you know you risk being left behind and because this is my career it's really something that I've had to adjust to and one thing I've learned about myself is I am not good with change. I have a hard time, you know, changing to the algorithms and what I should be doing versus what, again, like impulsively I want to do. So it takes me a while to find my footing with newer content. 
I'm enjoying the short form content now, but it is a lot of time to get the clips, edit them, do the transitions, add the text, do the voiceover, upload. So it's just something that I'm not used to putting a lot of time into. So I feel like I haven't uploaded maybe as many YouTube videos and I hope, you know, you guys understand and I'm just trying to find my footing on other platforms. But I feel like YouTube is just, it's my baby. It's always gonna be my baby. I feel like when I upload, I just know that my community is gonna be there and we're gonna chat and talk about the products. And I like that it's just me no filters, no, you know, whatever, and I'm just trying the products and giving you my honest thoughts. So I use TikTok and stuff like that more for just like shop with me or recommendations like, ooh, this was bad or I really liked this kind of thing. I don't do so much demoing on there. So once I have that down, I'm just going to use a different brush and really lightly buff the edges. Another thing I wanted to ask you guys is I know this is probably going to be split, but Sometimes when I'm doing, you know, trying new makeup videos, I'm really focused or most of the time I'm really focused on the makeup and then other times I feel like chatting again just depends on my mood and so like sometimes like today when I haven't filmed in a week, I really want to chat and catch up with you guys but then I know I get comments sometimes like just stick to the makeup so I was just kind of curious like do you guys like when I chat like about my week or you know what I think about what's going on in the industry or just you know updates or do you like when I just talk about the makeup because I feel like it's going to be split but sometimes I find myself chatting like in my footage and then I'll just edit it out because I feel like people don't care <laughs> so I'm just like ooh, maybe I should just stick to the makeup okay so i'm actually going to reach in just to a pressed powder this is from fenty beauty in the shade 260 it's not too warm and i'm going to use this very lightly again just to like buff over the edges because in the actual palette the lightest shade is like peachy and i don't want warmth i just want soft blend this is a really nice hack if you're trying to do a halo eye but you don't want it to go up too high. Okay, so to add a teeny bit more depth, I'm gonna take a little bit of this shade right here mixed with the shade we just used, and I'm keeping this very low. So this shade has like a purple tone to it, and then just blend around the edges lightly. So for the center of the lid, I used two different shades. I started off with this shade called Spontaneous, is that the truck? I was gonna blame NASCAR Teddy. I was, go I was gonna blame NASCAR Teddy, but it's the recycling truck, so we're gonna let it pass. But I started out with this shade right here, which is just like a pretty sort of like champagne shade, and then I did add a little bit of this shade, which is more of like a topper, a little bit more pink tone, but I added just a little bit. So I'm gonna start off with the first shade. And I used to use my finger and I just pulled straight down I didn't plan to get it under my eye, but here we are. So I just sort of pulled down just to get an initial kind of shape. And then I just sort of pat it on and sort of go back and forth, blend, but then I'm just gonna go over the outer corners with the deeper shades. So I started off here. So then you can go back in with one of your brushes. I'm going in with the deeper one and I just sort of go around the edges. So I just kind of do that and then I went in again with this shade. Now it's interesting because when you look at it in the pan, it almost looks like champagne gold, but it has like a pink sort of reflex. So I just sort of like tapped this on top, very subtle. And then again, just bring it up pretty high so that you have those sparkles like spotlight and then again just sort of go around the edges until you feel like blended the halo eyes are pretty easy but sometimes i find myself like you want the halo to be pretty like spotlight but you also want a little bit of blend okay so when i did this look last time i did use lashes but i want to try out this one size fantasize mascara so i got the mini i think i was in store doing some tiktok stuff and i just grabbed the mini this is one of those that has one of those like really prickly sort of wands it's supposed to be a lengthening i think and lifting so i curled my lashes so i just want to try this out because i'm not wearing liner 
Ooh, it's giving some length. It's definitely one of those that'll prick you though. Like it feels prickly on the lash line. All right, so this is what the mascara is looking like. Definitely feel like you're gonna get length. Not so much volume. It's starting to get a little bit clumpy in here. Okay, I actually just had to change one of my contacts because this got like in the corner of my eye. Overall, I feel like this is definitely gonna give you length, but I don't know about any volume and I personally like a more volumizing mascara so I would have to pair that with something to really kind of make my lashes look thicker overall but in the look that I was wearing in my previous video I actually used sort of the method of the at-home lash extensions but I used a regular pair of lashes for some reason the flutter habit doesn't work for me I can get it to stick for like maybe a day, but I can't get it to last. And this is supposed to be a five day under lash adhesive. I have the black and the clear and it takes forever to dry. Like I'll let it dry on the lash band for like a minute, two minutes, and it's still just slipping all over. I'm gonna try today with just regular lash glue because I see people do that. The reason I wanna put it under my lash line is because I have a hard time getting it to blend into my lash line when I put it on top without liner. That is why 99% of the time you see me put liner on. I like the way it looks, but I also just don't want to mess with the glue showing in my lash band looking like shiny because of the glue or smudged. So for me, I feel like I like to put it under my lash line just for when I'm not going to do any liner. So we're going to try today with my Tarte Lash Glue, which is one of my favorites. She looks busted because, I mean, I use this all the time. And I just cut up a pair of lashes. These are from Pound Lashes, and these are in the style 4D Halo, so I will link them down below. These are like literally $3. So I just cut them into three different sections, and I'm going to apply it with you on camera, and we'll see if just like a normal lash glue works. Okay, so I'm going to start with the outer section on this eye. I've not tried this with regular lash glue until just now, but I see people doing it. Yeah, I don't understand. Like, you see how that didn't really stick so if you have any recommendations i don't need lashes because i bought a bunch like just applying that i like how the eyes look so much more so i'm gonna take my lash tool and squeeze it together okay so that worked i feel like i'm having better luck with just a normal lash glue than the ones that are made for this so maybe i just need to stick with the lash glues that i know all right so i have the middle section of the lash i could just leave it as is but i want to try this okay and now i'm going to go in with the final section of the lash this part's tricky because i don't have many lashes for it to hang on to okay so we have one lash on it's just a learning curve for me but I feel like using a glue that I'm familiar with definitely helps. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other lash and then we're gonna move on to the face. Okay, lashes are on. I don't think they're 100% even, but I feel like they look good enough. So I wanna go in next to the new Huda Beauty Primer. So this is the Huda Beauty Glowish Blur Jam Silicone Free Smoothing Primer. It says that it's hydrating, fragrance-free, no silicone, and it is a primer that helps with texture, pores, and uneven tone. Oh, wow. This was not what I was expecting. <laughs> Look at the texture on that. That is interesting. So I already applied my moisturizer. I'm going to take some of this and just apply. Okay, it feels really cooling. And I feel like I see it blurring. The texture of it is reminding me sort of of the new Rem Beauty. It's kind of crazy. I do have to give it to Huda that she does come up with innovative releases so i'm curious to see how this looks once i put foundation on so for foundation i'm still testing out the house labs foundation i did a first impression on this but i used the powder from house labs as well and i felt like the powder accentuated my pores so i'm interested to see the experience with the huda primer and then just my huda powder so i have the shade 220 light medium warm so the shades I learned from you guys, I appreciate it, that these are like MAC, so they're kind of backwards. Not my favorite, just because I find it confusing, and you know, I was just sort of like, oh, light, medium, warm. And when I picked this up in store, 
there was like nothing out. They were unloading boxes. So I grabbed a couple and I was like, I think that'll work just to kind of get home and film the video. Packaging is A plus. This is one of the heaviest foundations I own. The shade again, isn't perfect. See how this does with my Huda powder because I used the new powder from House Labs and I just felt like it accentuated my pores. Okay, so now that we have the foundation on, I am gonna go in with the Milk Concealer. The shade is definitely light. It's pretty light though, especially with this foundation. So the texture feels kind of like skincare like. That shade's really light, that's my fault. Well, we'll still see how the coverage is. It feels very, almost like cooling on the under eye. So hopefully you guys can tell this is one layer. It's almost like giving me a mixture of the Charlotte Tilbury concealer mixed with the Say Beauty. I'm gonna take just a little bit more. And then I'm gonna use a brush this time to see how it blends. So this is what the Milk Makeup Concealer looks like. I definitely feel like it looks pretty radiant or hydrating. I don't know if it's just because I have the House Labs on. The color's way too light. I feel like the coverage is not medium to full. I would say low medium, buildable to medium. So I wanna see how powder goes over these products. I definitely am creasing, which I crease with pretty much every concealer. So I'm gonna use my Huda Beauty Pound Cake Powder. Why do I have a feeling that this Milk Concealer is not gonna set well? I don't know, I have a feeling. Okay, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. So I'm gonna pull my powder all the way down. Okay, so this side is set, this side is not. You can see just how much more smooth my skin looks. Definitely think the powder from House Labs was making my texture look worse. Just wasn't the most forgiving powder. I thought that the Milk might set weird, but it didn't. So I was wrong on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this side of my face. Okay, so the face is set. I finished my brows and they got a little out of hand, but I don't wanna mess with them too much. So I wanna go in to the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Locked Tiger Palette. So I did a video on all three palettes if you missed it. And I want to use this and just keep playing around with this for a bronzer. So this is the deepest of the colors. My favorite was the elephant and then this one, although I don't know, the more I look at this, I'm like, maybe this was my favorite. But I used this powder right here, which is supposed to be a finishing powder for deeper skin tones. I used it as a bronzer. It's really the only new bronzer I have, so I thought we could just play with it. So I'm gonna go in with this. And I did get a couple new brushes I bought from Beautyland from units. I talked about loving one of the bronzer brushes, so I got a couple more of those. And then I picked up a couple more just to try. So this is the Unit 107. So the day that I used this for my demo, I was like switching between so many palettes and colors and I was removing my makeup. So I wanna see how this looks, being a little bit more intentional and not just sort of trying to show the color. So this is what it looks like as a bronzer on my skin tone. Of course, I went pretty heavy. So I'm just gonna go in with my powder brush and just sweep over. All right, so now that we have bronzer on, I wanna go into the new Natasha Denona Cheek Palette. Inside, you have a powder highlighter. I swatched these and this swatch is gorgeous. Then you have a cream highlighter base which I typically don't use much, but we'll demo it. And then you have a cream blush. Her cream blush formulas almost don't feel like cream, so they're really easy to work with over powder as well, so I'm hoping we have a good experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the cream blush. This is a really neutral color. I'm gonna use the bottom of my sponge and really load it on, and then just sort of tap off on my hand. But I feel like her formula is not dewy at all. It's very almost cream to powder, so it's really easy to use. So there is the color. It's very neutral, but this is what it looks like. There's a very soft glow to it, but this doesn't even feel like a cream. If you're afraid of cream products, this would be a good formula for you to try out because it goes over powder easily. It's a good option if you don't like that sticky, dewy feel. I know a lot of cream blushes don't work well with powder or they are just sticky and tacky. This one, you cannot even tell it's a cream. So I wanna go in with the cream base. Now this, when you touch it, 
it's got a stick to it. So this definitely feels emollient. So I'm gonna use my finger and I'm just gonna tap this on the tops of my cheekbones. Now this, it feels almost like, I don't know, sort of like a lip balm, but it's not lifting, so that's good. So this is what the cream base looks like, but I wanna get into the powder highlighter. So she has a really good formula. I think it's called the Super Glows. She has sort of hit and miss. There's some palettes that I feel like the highlighter wasn't as good, but I'm hoping just based on how this feels and swatches, it feels very thin, but very creamy when you touch it. So I'm just gonna use my Real Techniques brush. I haven't been into as much of a blinding highlight recently. Like I still just like a little bit, but woo, honey, okay. Wow, that is definitely blinding. The only thing I don't like about that is I don't want like a stripe. Okay, so this is what the Natasha Denona cheek palette looks like. It's definitely pretty neutral. I would have liked to see a more punchy blush, but I feel like it worked beautifully. I don't know if it's something that I feel like is super special, but I wanna go in with the lip products. I've been seeing a lot of people loving the lip gloss especially and the lipstick. So this is the lip liner in Natasha. I really like her formula, but this shade, I'm wondering if it's gonna be too light, but we're gonna try it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and line my lips. Okay, this feels creamier than her other lip pencils. Okay, so I like the color more than I thought I would. Natasha really does cool toned lip liners well. I do feel like it's a little more creamy than her previous formulas, which I prefer a stiffer lip liner. And I think you're gonna go through this quickly because it's already flat just off of one use. But other than that, I actually really like the color a lot more than I thought I would. You guys know I always go for a brown nude, but I wanna see how it pairs with the lipstick and lip gloss. So this is her lipstick in this collection. It's called My Dream Lipstick Natasha. She did say that she reformulated the formula. So it's supposed to be creamier and I could tell watching people apply it that it's definitely more sort of like satin like or shiny than her original lipsticks because I do have a few that I really like so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this it's definitely shinier Ooh, I don't know about that color Woo! So I'm noticing that because the lipstick is so creamy and her lip liner formula is more of a dry down long wear, I'm seeing like a little bit of separation. It's almost like the lipstick is so shiny and creamy that it doesn't want to blend into the dry down lip liner. So it's almost like I'm having a hard time getting them blended, but I wanna go in with the gloss. I feel like everybody's going crazy over the gloss. So again, this is in Natasha. Her glosses, I've liked them. They haven't been like holy grail, but this looks like it has a nice amount of pigment. Definitely cool toned on me. This smells really good too. Like cupcakes. Although I feel like my lips are already shiny because that lipstick, not sticky at all. So if you hate sticky glosses. This is very comfortable. I mean, it's a beautiful lip combo. I just feel, I don't know, I like to have a deeper lip liner. It's very cool toned on me as well. Okay guys, so here's my finished makeup look, recreating the look you guys requested and using new products. So let's go over my thoughts, starting off with the Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. So I wanna continue to play with this because I did only use four shades. I do like that you can get a cool toned look like I'm wearing. I think that's a nice twist because this really does lean more purple, berry, you know, the tones that we see a lot. So I wanted to play with the ones that I felt like a lot of people wouldn't. I had zero issues blending. I love her midi palettes. So for me, I pretty much knew I was going to like this. I'm excited to get into this color story right here. I really wanna play with the duochrome next. So I'll continue to play around with this palette, but so far I'm really enjoying it. As far as the one size mascara. I like it, but I'm not wowed. I typically like more of a volumizing mascara, and this one is definitely more of a lengthening, lifting. I do feel like it does provide length because it is that spiky type of 
wand, but for me, I just like a little bit more oomph to make my lashes overall look thicker. So I'll keep testing this out. Sometimes the minis can be different as well, so that could be a factor, but this would be something that I would use first and then go in with something a little bit more volumizing to make my lashes look as full as possible because we all know that I'm not working with much. One of the products I'm quite impressed with, I'm actually shocked and I'm excited to keep using it, is the Glowish by Huda Beauty Blur Jam. This is super unique. The formula and the feel of it, it reminds me of the Rem Beauty New Blurring Primer. Just the way it looks, but I don't know, the feel is a little bit different. This is a little bit thinner. It doesn't feel as mattifying, and I like that it's silicone free. A lot of pore smoothing primers, if not all of them, have silicones. So if you are sensitive or they break you out or you just don't wanna use them, this could be a good option. It really is one of those that I feel like I can put all over my face as well. It's thick in the jar, but as you spread it out, it really does smooth out all over the skin. Sometimes pore smoothing primers like the Tarte Timeless, I would really only work in on the sides of my nose. This one I feel like I could blend all over, and I love that it's fragrance free. I do feel like my skin looks quite smooth. Now I did use my Huda powder that I love. So this might be something that I feel like could become a favorite. I'm probably most excited to keep using this. I'm not quite sure how I feel about the Milk makeup concealer yet. I think the packaging is really cute and the doe foot is a little stiff for me. It's one of those I feel like you have to dip in a couple times and it just doesn't have any bend to it which isn't my favorite. Now this to me does not feel medium to full coverage. More of like a light medium maybe medium coverage. I do feel like it looked quite glowy but it doesn't have like any shimmer to it. It almost felt like the Charlotte Tilbury new concealer, but no radiance, less coverage. It's reminding me a lot of the Say concealer, but a little bit thinner, more coverage. I always try to compare it in my head. It's like if those two had a baby, sort of. I do think that the shade is too light for me, so it's throwing me off, but it did set well with powder. I feel like I can still see the blueness under my eyes, but this would be one that I would use every day. I don't feel like my under eyes look dry or, you know, cakey or anything like that. I just think the shade is too light for me, so I'll keep trying this, and if I do end up really liking it, then I'll probably pick up a deeper shade, but if you've tried this, I wanna know your thoughts or what do you guys think about how it applied? Now, in terms of the House Labs foundation, I'm pretty surprised how much I like this. It is definitely radiant, so I don't feel like it's natural. It is more glowy on me. I think the packaging is gorgeous and the shade range can be confusing, but I feel like using my powder that I know and love, my skin looks much smoother than it did when I demoed it with the House Labs powder. I'm very picky with powders. I need a powder that's super smoothing and the Huda Beauty is my top pick. So I feel like this mixed with that, I feel more smooth. Now again, sometimes I can't really tell. I'm looking in the viewfinder until I actually get my footage on the computer, but I do feel like my skin looks really nice. Now this is a foundation that gets oily on me, so I do have to touch up throughout the day but it doesn't break up, it wears, it doesn't come off, and that's an issue I have with a lot of hydrating foundations. I think for my skin type personally, if you're oily or combo, this is a beautiful one that's going to mix well. I feel like this is gonna be something that you can have a pump of this with two pumps of a mat or vice versa, but I can still wear it alone. It's not as oily or dewy as, let's say, the Charlotte Tilbury, which for me was like unbearably thick, sticky, transferred, just overly oily and it just enhanced all my texture. I really don't feel like that with this one. It's definitely thinner. It's got a good medium coverage. It really does play well with powder too and it lasts. So I feel like if you want a radiant, they say natural, but I think radiant foundation, but you want it to last, this may be a good option. I'm still really enjoying the Hourglass palettes. I've been playing around with them more and I've been using Butterfly every day, but this one, I don't know. There's something about about the bronzer in here, it's not a bronzer, but I'm using it as a bronzer, that I actually really like the color on my skin tone, and I also like the fact that it's sheer. So even though it's deep for my skin tone, because it's a setting powder, or what do they call it? A light focus, I can't even think right now, a finishing powder, it's thinner. So 
it's sheer. It's not going to be full pigment. So even though it's deep, I can work with it with a light hand. And I really love the blush in here as well. Well, there's a couple blushes. You know what? I, I get confused because I reviewed, <laughs> I reviewed all three of these and I was like, this one's new. This one's not. This one's new. It's a lot. I also love the packaging and I love that you can customize it. So if you like the tiger color story, but you want the elephant uh, outer packaging you can do that so I will link this down below but I've really been loving it the only one that I'm not super thrilled with for my skin tone is the butterfly moving on to the Natasha Denona cheek palette I think this is cute I think it's pretty I mean I feel like my skin looks nice but I'm not wowed I feel like the blush is too similar to the ones that we've seen in the glam palettes that had like the highlighter blush and the eyeshadows and I feel like, again, the highlighters we've seen, I know obviously I like a neutral highlighter, but I just feel like it's a little bit eh, like I wouldn't repurchase this. It doesn't add anything crazy to my collection. It's pretty, but I have this. Now, if you're new to Natasha Denona, you may want to pick this up. Keep in mind also that I love a bright blush. I mean, I really like something that has an oomph to it, and this is quite neutral, so that could be kind of partly why I'm not like, woo, about it. And then in terms of the lip products, the lip liner, probably my least favorite, just because it's a smidge light. I like it more than I thought I would, but I feel like the combo together is a little bit blanked out for me. The lipstick I think is beautiful and I think it's going to be a really pretty cool toned, almost like a cool toned nudie pink mauve. On me it's pulling very cool. I like that it's more hydrating as well. I think it would do best with a lip liner that doesn't wear as long as Natasha so that it blends better. And then I think the gloss is gorgeous as well. Although these two together, I'm like, do you need both? Because this is already shiny. So I don't know. I feel like these two are my favorites. The lip liner, I could give or take. But overall, I like all three lip products. I do think it's kind of an interesting nude color. I typically go for like peachy nude or pinky nude. So this is a little bit different, a little bit more cool tone than I would typically go for. But I do think it's beautiful. Okay, guys. So that is everything for this trying new makeup. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Just just seeing the Natasha collection in action and then I threw in a couple other products but I am still testing a lot as well so I'd love to know down below what you guys think of this makeup what you think about how the products applied I would love to hear your thoughts I always am curious to see what your experience is or if you agree with me sometimes I'll say like oh that's patchy and you guys will say like I don't see the patching and then other times I think something looks good and you're like girl you needed to blend more so I always love to see uh, what you guys think in terms of what you're seeing on your screen. If you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. Of course, I will link everything that I use today down below in my description box. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.